Hey guys, it's Nobiter, and I've got another World of Tanks video here. This is a game I had with the STB on Siegfried Line Assault, and the STB is another one of my favorite tier 10s. It's actually my most played tank. Uh, I played it a ton when it first got released, and I was curious about trying it out again since it got some changes in the time that I stopped playing. I don't know the specifics of what got changed because I, <laughs> I just don't really remember exactly how the tank was before, but Obviously, one of the things that got changed is the damage got reduced from 390 to 360, and the rate of fire was increased. So the DPM is still incredibly high on this tank, and it also still has the same awesome gun depression, and those were two things that I really loved about the tank before. One thing that was changed uh, possibly to offset that, though, was uh, the STB now gets an AP shell as its standard round, uh, whereas before, I'm pretty sure it used to get APCR. All the tier 10 meds used to have APCR as their standard round. Uh, so having AP can make it a little bit awkward to play the tank sniping, or at least it took me a little while to get used to it. You know, with, in general with tier 10 meds, I'm used to just you know having the APCR and the the really fast uh, shell speed. But with the, with an AP round, you have to calculate your your shots when you're shooting from distance a little more than you would otherwise. Uh, and beyond that. You know, I'm not sure about specific changes they made to the gun handling. It feels like the dispersion on the move is a little better. But in general, I still find the gun derps a fair amount. It can be a little infuriating at times. And the other thing I found is that the turret armor also feels a little less reliable. Uh, but again, that could just be me you know, playing the tank slightly too aggressively or, or over-relying on the turret armor. As I've been playing more games with the tank, I found that it, it's generally better to play it as though you don't really have armor instead of you know assuming that your turret will just block anything that, that gets shot at you. Uh, so anyway, as I said, I've been playing it quite a bit the last couple weeks, and it's definitely a fun tank to play between the DPM and the gun depression. It feels like it has really high potential, but I also think it is less consistent than a lot of the other tier 10 meds, and in that respect, I think it's fairly similar to how it used to be. In the right situation, this tank can feel godly, but you also run into a lot of situations where it, it can feel kind of awkward. So with all that said, I'll get this replay started. On Siegfried Line Assault from the defending side, I typically like to play the north of the map at the start of the game, poking that ridge along the 6th line and trying to get early lights on anything the enemy is sending there can be really effective. You can often get shots on tanks that are trying to get into position around A5 or A6, so that's what I'm going to try to do here. There are three arty in this game though, so I do have to be a little careful. There's not a lot of, I mean there's really no arty cover at all in this area. Uh, so, you know, I can't just really sit on this ridge in one spot and uh, hope that they just don't hit me. I'm going to have to keep moving around a little bit. So that Object 430 gets lit, and I actually didn't light him, so I was hoping to peek up here and catch him by surprise. I had a pretty clear side shot there, but my gun derped, unfortunately. I lit an SU a little further back, though, and uh, I'm in a good position where I can just peek this ridge and make it really difficult for him to shoot me. So. I actually get two shots into the SU there. I think with the old STB, I probably wouldn't have reloaded in time to get that second shot off. So there you can see the benefit of the slightly faster reload. And then I get hit back to back by two of the enemy arty. so immediately I'm reminded of the fact that there are three arty in this game and I have to be wary of that. I decide to peek this bush toward the middle of the map just to vary my positioning a little bit and you know continue moving around so arty doesn't get another easy shot on me. And there you saw another arty shell land in that bush as soon as I'd reversed out of it. I'm able to actually sneak a shot under the tracks of that 430 there. I was kind of surprised that shot penned, to be honest. But now there are a couple tanks lit in the middle of the map, so I'm going to turn my attention more to that area, especially with the Sheridan on my team having moved up to A7. I'm expecting that he's going to kind of hold the 430 back and prevent him from poking that ridge, so I'm probably not going to get any more opportunities to hit him anytime soon. So I get a few easy shots into those tier 8s playing around E6, and you can see how strong this position can be. Not only is it good for contesting the north, but you also often get the chance for some flank shots on the enemy tanks trying to move into the city. It's a great position to play to influence multiple areas of the map, and a lot of times you know, those tanks in the middle aren't really going to be in a position to do anything about you shooting them. So anyway, I saw that the Sheridan on my team had actually pushed over the ridge to engage that 430. And then it looked like the LHMTV was was relocating to try to help the 430, so I got a couple shots into the LHMTV, and he actually ends up pushing over this ridge uh, to attack me. I was kind of surprised by that. So you saw I had, had 
turn my attention toward the SU further back, and then <laughs> only when the S, uh, when the LH actually ended up shooting me did I sort of turn over to face him. So I got the kill shot on the LH MTV. I did take a shot from the Object 430, but I'm still in pretty good shape here, and then I actually sneak another shot there into the side of the Object 430. Another shot that I didn't really expect to hit. Now the Object 430 is a one-shot, so I don't feel like I have to worry about him. And uh, again, there are tanks in the enemy team moving up through the middle of the map trying to get into the city. So I get a shot at the T-57 Heavy. I did get hit again there by Artie, but I used my first aid kit there immediately because I wanted to make sure that I could take advantage of the fact that, you know, this IS-3 is just stuck out in the open. Fortunately, one of my shots bounced there, but yeah, I'm just going to keep peeking this ridge uh, as long as he stays there. I don't know if he's tracked or not, but anyway, I get the last couple shots into him to take him out. I was going to turn back toward the north, but then I saw this T-44 actually poke out to shoot me, and I figured I would, you know, try to just take a bit of a snapshot on him, and luckily that shot actually pens as well, so the T-44 goes down, and now, I mean, this game is practically over at this point, uh, we're already uh, up 10 to 5, uh, the T-100 light tank is out of the open, and with a 430 gun I can just, you know, poke him freely, so I get one shot into him. The only thing I'm, I'm really worried about here is Artie, which is why you kind of see me playing a little bit cautiously, uh, but the SU gets lit, so there's only one Artie left now, and I'm just going to kind of poke up a little more aggressively, I get another shot there into the T-100. Then I like the 212 back in A3, and I, I actually get lit in return. And I was really worried here that he was going to he kind of snapshot me and, and kill me. So I focused on taking him out, even though I, I did see this, or I you know, obviously saw the Prosetto shooting me in the side. But I knew that once I killed him, I could back up uh, beyond behind the ridge enough so that he wouldn't be able to get a kill shot on me. I was a little wary of, of actually poking this ridge just because I didn't really trust the armor. But then when the Prosetto gets hit by our Artie and is stunned, I feel like I can poke the ridge and you know he's probably not going to be able to hit me or, or pen me and then the standard B goes in and takes him out and now it's just the VK left so uh, I get one last shot into him and uh, then my teammates finish him off uh, so really a pretty fast game uh, you know less than five minutes long but I thought it was a good example of, of what you can do with the STB in a good situation not only was I able to play those ridges and, and take advantage of the STB's gun depression but most of the engagements I took over the course of this game were kind of close to medium range, and that really suits the STB. It makes its poor gun handling much less of an issue. Uh, so anyway, now I'll uh, quickly show you guys the post-game stats. And here are the post-game stats. This game wasn't quite enough for an ace tanker, but I did end up with about 7.5k damage, which was pretty good, I think, considering how short the game was. I was able to keep the gun pretty active over the course of the game, so you could really see the STB's DPM in action. You know, it wasn't necessarily the most tactically interesting game, but I had wanted to try to do an STB video, so uh, you know, hopefully you guys enjoyed it nonetheless. I actually do have another replay with the STB that I'll probably post without commentary uh, sometime in the next few days. It's sort of similar to this one in the sense that I think it's more of me farming damage than really doing anything super tactically interesting. Uh, but I'm probably going to keep playing the STB, and you know, hopefully at some point I end up with a replay that has a bit more tactical depth to it. But uh, anyway, uh, that's it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys later.